I'm Courtney Fallon, and welcome to the Game Plan on Reach TV, your insider guide to this week's key NFL action. In the Game Plan, I tap into the Believe Podcast Network to bring you the most important information you need to know for this week's big games. As we enter the final week of the regular season, there are a number of NFL storylines that will shape this upcoming postseason. Listen, it's January. Let's go. Who else is excited to go over those big questions headed into week 18? I am joined by Jason Campbell, the host of Believe in Everything Auburn and former NFL quarterback for who are now the commanders of Washington. Jason, you ready to play three and out? Hey, I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, first down. The question is, Michigan, they booked their ticket to the national championship game. Does Jim Harbaugh jump ship and head back to the NFL in the offseason? There's a lot of questions. I think that he hired John Yee is talking about possibly making a comeback. Or, I mean, if you see him going to the NFL, where would he go? Oh, that's a great question. When I look at uh, Coach Harbaugh and what he's accomplished so far in Michigan, the only thing he hasn't done yet is win a national championship. So I feel like if he's if he wins the national championship uh, this this coming Monday, I think he heads to the NFL. I really do because the simple fact the agent that he just hired is an NFL based agent that mm-hmm. that does a lot of coaches' contracts. So that kind of tells you a little bit right there that there's something moving and staring up in the and staring up right now. Coach Harbaugh to leave Michigan and go to the NFL. Second down here is the Bears. They have the number one pick by way of the Carolina Panthers. Is the Justin Fields era over in Chicago? Well, you heard all the chance. We want Justin uh, (laughs) this this past weekend. And this is going to be a tough decision because over the second half of the NFL season, he's shown a lot of signs of improvement. The thing comes down to do they feel like they have a guy that that they that they just been waiting to draft in Caleb Williams mm-hmm. and will will he be the guy for them or will Justin be a really good piece to to trade you know there's going to be some teams in the hunt for for quarterbacks this offseason and Justin you know is in a good position where he could end up in a place like Atlanta or you know somewhere like that but it's going to be a tough decision but I probably say the Bears will end up keeping that pick and probably trading Justin All right, third down. Uh, The NFC East will come down to the final division games of the season. Cowboys versus Commanders and the Eagles and Giants. Who wins the NFC East and why? This is right in your wheelhouse, Jason. So what do you think? Yeah, it hurts me to say this, but I think the Cowboys are going to win the NFC East. Uh, You think about the the Eagles. They start off 11-1 over the last five games. They've been 1-4. And, you know, I just feel like you don't want to be going to the playoffs trending in that direction. And, and of course, you know, Dallas dropped two in a row to Buffalo and Miami, but then they responded last weekend, probably what was called a a gift, you know, uh, from the refs. and and given the (laughs) Yeah, a (laughs) gift. So (laughs) everyone saw that game and saw how that that went. But I think Dallas in prime position to win the NFC East. All right, finally, our bonus question. Which team missed the playoffs this season but set themselves up for a big 2024? Ooh, that's a great question. Uh, Probably Pittsburgh. You know, Pittsburgh or the Bengals to me because the Bengals, you know Joe Burrow's coming back next year, so they'll be a different team. Uh, You know, anytime he's in the lineup, he gets them an opportunity to to contend for a championship. But I say Pittsburgh because I know in the offseason they're going to make the moves they need to make to get an offensive coordinator. They're also going to, you know, they've won nine games so far this year with all the chaos that they had to face, like not even having a 300-yard game until over halfway of the season total offense. So I think this is a team that's defense. They're built correctly. If they can fix the offense, they'll be a team to have to keep an eye on next year. Okay. We love it. Thank you so much. War Eagle. I will give you that. War no, Eagle. We War Eagle. Yeah, th- thank right. you for having me. I- I'm, still, I'm still feeling my wounds from this past weekend. I, I don't know what happened. I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Listen, Coach Locks has got that program uh, on lock, and I'm happy about it. All right. Thank you, Jason, so much for your time. Up next, I'm breaking down my three key games that you need to know for week 18. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Each week, I like to focus on three key games that you need to know about. And entering week 18, I have circled these three matchups that we need to cover. One, two, three. Each one of these games will have a major impact 
on this postseason. My first game will decide the AFC East as the Bills head to South Florida to face the Miami Dolphins with the division on the line. I love it. There is nothing better than that last game of the season deciding a division and the Bills. They're riding a full game winning streak going into week 18 and think about this before their bye week. The Bills had just a 15% chance of making the playoffs. Times change. Fast forward to week 18 and they're one win away from snatching the AFC East. To find out what the Bills need to do to take down the Dolphins, let's talk to Mookie Hawkins and Justice Radford from the Believe in Bills podcast. Guys, what is the game plan for Buffalo? Thanks, Courtney. After a 6-6 six and six starts, the Bills are now at 10 wins and on the cusp of making the playoffs. They got a tough battle, divisional battle this week against the Miami Dolphins, who might have blown it. What are you expecting this weekend? Well, I'm expecting the Bills uh, to just take care of business when you look at this matchup. I call this injuries versus urgency. The Dolphins are banged up, obviously, on the edges with Chubb uh, going down with the ACL tear. Uh, Phillips is banged up. Waddle, Mostert, and then you still can add Tunga, you know, Tunga to a lower on the list, as well as Tyreek Hill versus the urgency of this Bills team, you know, having to win to control their own destiny if they want to make the playoffs. Yeah, the Bills have put themselves in a very, very bad predicament with all the AFC losses they took earlier this year. So their ranges span from either the two seed to six seed, seven seed, or not in at all. So the Buffalo Bills have to win and end. Now do it for us here at Believe in Bills. Back to you, Courtney. Thank you, guys. Yes, that's a very good point. Miami is a little bit banged up at the moment. The Bills need to take care of business. So when we return, we'll hear from Sam Marco and Chris Cullen from the Perfect Bill podcast, who will tell us how the Finns can get a win at home. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Game Plan on Reach TV. The Miami Dolphins are coming off of their worst loss since 2019 as the Ravens demolished the Finns 56 to 19 last week. And the loss was just a little more than just an embarrassment. It opened the door up for the Buffalo Bills to snatch the division away. Also, let's not forget that the Bills have won 10 out of their last 12 meetings against Miami. So to find out how the Dolphins bounce back in week 18, let's hear from Sam Marco and Chris Cullen from the Perfectville podcast. Guys, what do you got for me? Thanks, Courtney, and Happy New Year. Chris, the Miami Dolphins are hoping to have a happy new year and win the AFC East for the first time in many, many years. But in order to do that, they're going to have to beat the Buffalo Bills, where Josh Allen, the quarterback for the Bills, is 9-2 and all time against these Miami Dolphins. Also, they're going to have to do it on Sunday night football, where they're 2-4 and four since 2006. How do they overcome the odds and finally crown themselves AFC East champs? Well, Sam, they got one thing going for them, and they're seven and one at home. The Buffalo Bills are three and four on the road, but it all comes down to this. The last game of the season, Sunday night football, winner wins the division. The Dolphins have to stay healthy, Sam. They're just reeling right now, counting on some backups. So if they want to ring in the new year as AFC East champions in a home game at Hard Rock Stadium in the playoffs, they're going to have to take Josh Allen down, limit them to long third downs and establish a run game. If they do that, they're uh, AFC East champs. Back to you, Courtney. All right, thanks, guys. Yes, controlling Josh Allen will be the key to winning the division. I'm really excited for this quarterback matchup, by the way. Josh Allen has had his highs and his lows this year, but this is his redemption moment. Going up against a guy in Tua Tunga Vailoa has been in the MVP conversation this year. My predictions, I've got the hometown team, the Miami Dolphins, taking this one over the Buffalo Bills. My second key game is a win and you're in game as the Texans travel to Indianapolis to face the Colts. You can say that both teams have been a surprise this season, but only one will make the postseason. CJ Stroud decided to skip his rookie year and just play like a veteran this year. <laughs> He's also minus 1600 for odds for offensive rookie of the year this year. Yes, very, very elite to say the least. I'm such a fan of CJ Stroud. This was supposed to be a rebuilding process for the Houston Texans, but thanks to the play of their QB one, they find themselves in a win or go home situation in week 18. To find out what the Texans must do to punch their ticket to the playoffs, let's hear from Harley Dugan and Ruben Cavillo from the Believe in Texans podcast. Guys, what can we expect from this Texans team? 
Thanks, Courtney. The Houston Texans find themselves in a win and you win situation on Saturday versus the Indianapolis Colts. Now, who would have thought the Houston Texans were going to be in this situation? I mean, just a couple of months ago, you selected CJ Stroud with the second overall pick in the draft. You have a rookie head coach in D'Amico Ryans, a rookie offensive coordinator in Bobby Slowick, and you now find yourselves one game away from the playoffs. Harley, what do you think about this game on Saturday? We're absolutely ecstatic as the Houston fan base. The Texans are hungry, but the Colts are just as hungry. The Colts with Gardner Minshew exploit big plays constantly. That's been an Achilles heel for this Houston Texans team, but you best be sure that D'Amico Ryans is going to try to avenge that week two loss against Shane Steichen. He's going to get that get back win. He's going to get that dub. And the Houston Texans, dare I say, back in the playoffs in quite some time. Back to you, Courtney. Okay, guys, thank you so much for that. Yes, they have to stop the big plays from beating them and eliminate that Minshew magic. I am such a big believer in D'Amico Ryans. It's a lot about the coaching and a lot about the players on the field, but I think that D'Amico Ryans has his team in a great position to win. Let's remember that the Colts at one point this season were three and five, and everyone was talking about what draft pick they would end up with and not a possible playoff spot at the end of the year. If the Colts win and the Jags lose, the Colts would walk away with the division. So to find out what Indy needs to do to make the playoffs, let's hear from Lawrence Owen and Donald Thomas from the Believe in Colts podcast. Guys, what is the game plan? Give it to me. Thanks, Courtney. This upcoming weekend could be a huge match right here, obviously, with the Texans and the Indianapolis Colts. And really, this game could decide who's gonna be coach of the year, right? I mean, depending upon how both these teams started off and where they were projected to be at the end of the year, whoever wins this game is gonna end up being 10 wins on the season and a good chance that they could even win the division, but guaranteed making the playoffs. The team that loses most likely is out. What is your thoughts about this, Donald? Oh man, you hit the nail on the head. I think, you know, both of these teams coming into the season uh, from last year to where they are now uh, is tremendous. And so when you look at it, it's just like, who was worse last year? Who's going to probably possibly make the playoffs? So it's amazing to see, and this is a big game. Absolutely. And it kind of, you know, it kind of raises the question because D'Amico Ryan's defensive coach, Shane Steichen offensive coach, right? So who you want to win, who you want to be your head coach, I think that's going to do it for us here at Believe in Colts. Thanks again. Back to you, Courtney. Yes, good point, guys. This game will most likely decide who wins the Coach of the Year award. But, I mean, listen, for me, it's, again, between D'Amico Ryans and Dan Campbell in Detroit. I've said this a few weeks ago, and I still think the Colts are smoke and mirrors, and I have a big belief in this Texans team, so I'm taking the Texans to win this one. And my final key game will focus on the NFC East playoff picture as the Eagles head north to the Meadowlands to face their NFC foe, the New York Giants. The Eagles are just stumbling into the playoffs after a Week 17 loss to the Cardinals. Yikes. The loss means that they have one win in their last five games and not really the way that they thought their season would end. But they are still in the mix to win the division with a win against the Giants and a Dallas Cowboys loss. To find out how the Eagles can right their ship, let's hear from Mike Gill and Aton Shander from the Believe in Eagles podcast. Guys, what do you got for me? Thanks, Courtney. Well, the Eagles close out the regular season against the New York Giants, a team they just played on Christmas Day. Now they'll play them in their first game of 2024 with a lot different vibes around this team, Aton Shander. The vibes are bad. The Eagles are going to the playoffs, but can they even beat the Giants? Right now, the Philadelphia Eagles can't get out of their own way. They insist on making things more difficult than they have to be. Well, the Eagles have changed coordinators. Is it the coaching problem or is it a player problem on Philadelphia? Both right now. Clearly, Matt Patricia wasn't the answer. This is a major problem on defense. They can't pressure the quarterback. They can't stop big X plays. They can't do anything, and they can't even stay healthy. They can't tackle. They can't defend. They can't rush the quarterback. They can't win. They can't win, and if they don't win, they will be the five seed. If they do win and the Dallas loss, they would be the two or the three. Either way, Aton, this looks like a one-and-done type of team in Philadelphia. Back to you, Courtney. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate the insight. I agree. The Eagles have to stop shooting themselves in the foot. They cannot stop anyone right now. It's not a good time to have a relapse before this postseason run. No bueno. 
When we return, we will hear from Carl Banks and Bob Papa, who will break down what the New York football giants need to do to finish up their season on a high note. Stay right there. Welcome back to The Game Plan on Reach TV. The New York Giants have had another season to forget in 2023 with just five wins on the year. But the schedule has handed them an opportunity to ruin their NFC East rivals division hopes. And that type of motivation is just what the Eagles fear. To find out how the Giants end their season and on a high note, let's hear from Carl Banks and Bob Papa from the Believe in Giants podcast. Guys, what do the Giants need to do to get this win on Sunday? Thanks, Courtney. Bob Papa and two-time Super Bowl champion Carl Banks. We believe in Giants. So, Carl, the Giants are going to wrap up their season taking on the Philadelphia Eagles at MetLife Stadium. What are you expecting from the Giants in this week's game against Philadelphia? Well, I would expect them to compete, Bob, because if you can match your effort with execution, you have a chance of winning the game. The Philadelphia Eagles are a playoff team. As a Giant, your season is lost, but you're playing a playoff game right now. You've got to match their effort and out-execute if you expect to win this game. Yeah, I think one of the best things for the Giants that's happened late in this season as they drifted out of playoff contentions was having to play the Packers, having to play at New Orleans, having to play Philadelphia on Christmas, having to play the Rams, and now wrapping up against Philly because you're playing playoff-style games, even though you're mathematically eliminated. And what better way to get a read on your players than to yeah. have them in a high stakes poker game. Carl, uh, we're looking forward to the Giants and Eagles for Carl Banks. I'm Bob Papa. Believe in Giants as we send it back to Courtney. That's a great point, guys, and very smart to think about it. This is the Giants playoff game. This is it. This is it. They're going to go out there. They're going to give it everything they've got. Tommy Cutlets, what a story this season. And listen, I'm a huge fan of Brian Dable. He did win five Super Bowl rings as a coach for the Patriots, but what he's doing with the Giants right now, he is feared by other teams and he is respected within that locker room. So I'm going to say that the Giants are going to go ruin some days. They're going to go out there and they're going to get this win over the Eagles. Surprise, surprise. So those are my three key games for week 18. Next up in pick six, we will be breaking down all of the stars of the fantasy football season. Stay right there. Okay, it is that time of the show where we play pick six on the game plan. In this episode, we are joined by a very good friend of mine, and he is the fantasy football expert for everyone. Michael Fabiano, the host of the fantasy football show, who will also break down some breakout stars and failed picks that made this NFL fantasy season special. Michael, welcome to the show. Uh, always a pleasure. Great to see your smiling face, my friend. <laughs> we worked at NFL Network together, and of course, you know, all things come full circle. You're bound to be involved with all of your co former co-workers, especially when you're as good at your job as you are, Michael Fabiano. Number one, who was your fantasy MVP of the year? Was it Tyreek Hill? Uh, was it Christian McCaffrey? I think that you are going to pick the latter. Am I correct? Yeah, it's got to be Christian McCaffrey. He scored 120 more fantasy points than the next best running back, uh, which was Travis Etienne. So that's crazy. He was super consistent. He was the highest scoring player in fantasy, regardless of position. And it's really hard for a running back to outscore some of the high end quarterbacks, but that's what McCaffrey did. You know, Tyree Kill is going to be up there. CeeDee Lamb will be up there as well. Uh, but it's hard not to give this to Christian McCaffrey. Okay, number two, who was your biggest surprise of the fantasy season? I know there were a lot of wide receivers, Tank Dell, Puka Nakua. Um, who was your biggest fantasy surprise in your eyes? Got to be Kyron Williams because nobody saw it coming. And look what happened. Kyron Williams came out of nowhere. This guy had an ADP, which is an average draft position, of 204. All right, so wow. do the math. That's crazy. He ended up being a league winner. Kyron Williams was about as consistent, as solid as you can get. And so Kyron Williams now, Fallon, goes from being a guy that didn't get drafted or got drafted really late to potentially being a first round pick and certainly no worse than the second round pick in 2024. Number three, your biggest fantasy disappointment this year. I think you have a couple on your list that are very top on your list. The, the biggest one has to be Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. Averaged seven fewer points this year than he did last season. That's crazy. His wide receivers did not help him with drops, et cetera. Rasheed Rice was really good. Travis Kelsey was not. We'd rather him score fantasy points than uh, you know <laughs> Date Taylor, but the bottom line here is that the Chiefs offense just was not as good this season. And so Patrick Mahomes, who was the first quarterback drafted in most leagues, 
was drafted in the first three rounds in most leagues was not nearly as good as we wanted him to be on a points per game basis. He wasn't even in the top 10 among quarterbacks. That is brutal. Fabs, let's move on to our final two questions for this uh, pick six. What was the most challenging aspect of this season in your eyes, or at least for everyone that really competed in a fantasy league? The injuries. It yep. was crazy. You know, and it wasn't just like running backs getting hurt, which they did, but quarterbacks. Every week, a guy was going down. You know, and, and, and superstars, too. I mean, Anthony Richardson was awesome. We lost him. Kirk Cousins, we lost him. He was putting up great numbers like... I mean, Aaron Rodgers played, what, you know, four snaps, and he four was snaps. gone. <laughs> it was not a good year to be a starting quarterback in the National Football League, and it really hurt the NFL's product. All right. Well, on the heels of that question and your answer, uh, Fabs, our final question here is, well, what does the season say about drafting a backup quarterback? Yeah, in the past, if you drafted a Mahomes or a Hurts or Josh Allen, you probably didn't draft the second quarterback, especially, you know, if you're in a smaller league because, you know, when are you going to use the backup in the bye week? That's it. But with all the injuries, I think people are going to be rostering two quarterbacks. But I think the bigger uh, scenario as it pertains to the field generals is that you're going to wait again. Mm -hmm. Last year, we had Hurts go off and Allen and Mahomes was actually Mahomes and not putting up stinkers like he did this past year. Uh, and it was it was a situation where like, wow, having one of these lead quarterbacks is really a huge advantage from a fantasy perspective. So these guys got drafted earlier than ever before. I'm not doing that again. Because look at the guys who we drafted later, not at all, that were awesome this year. Mm -hmm. Sam Howell, for a while, was a top five quarterback. Dak Prescott of my beloved Dallas Cowboys was drafted middle rounds or late, and he was very good. Brock Purdy, I mean, heck, in the beginning of the year, we weren't even sure if it was going to be him or Trey Lance. Mm -hmm. And then he comes out and he puts up great numbers. So a quarterback is going to be a position that is going to get deeper uh, because all the injured guys will be back. And we'll get a few young guys uh, who are going to be thrust into prominent roles. So. Uh, you're going to be waiting on your quarterbacks next season and certainly be looking to back up those quarterbacks because of all the injuries that we dealt with in 2023. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much. Michael Fabiano here uh, on The Game Plan. We hope to have you around soon. Well, that's all the time we have today on The Game Plan. Go check out the Believe Podcast Network for more in-depth analysis on every team in the league. And also, don't forget, you can catch every game live on Reach TV all season long. We'll see you next week. That's the playoffs. Let's go.